Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Yusuf Hanif again. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We are back again to do Tali. And we will be reading from our book, from our shelf. The Life of Hadrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for youth. This is a book from the Zamzam Publishers series. And it's by Sheikh Hamid Ahmed Tahir. We start with the opening supplication. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbi zidni ulma. Rabbi zidni ulma. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Allahumma salli al Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad in kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim in naka hamid al majid. So, we had just started this book and we was dealing with what happened 1400 years ago at the time of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see that even the monks were awaiting his birth and they gazed at the stars and asked everyone who came to Syria from Arabia about the new births amongst them. And the Quraysh, they lived in Mecca and they were the most important tribe of Arabia. And some of their, some of them worshipped idols, and they would put the statues and stones of wood which the Arabs made, and worship the size of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala around the Kaaba. And some of the names of the idols were Al Lat, Al Uzza, Hubal. These tribes they wage war against each other for petty reasons. The Arabs live by means of business and herding and they would drink the goat's milk and use its hair to make bedding and blankets. Abdul Mutalib was from the Banu Hashim, one of the Quraysh clans. He was the chief of the Quraysh and had 10 sons and we, we see that uh, he had made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He promised Allah that if he gave him 10 sons, he would slaughter one of them at the Kaaba's door. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him in this. And he gave him 10 sons. But he also gave him a way out. And he was able to keep all of his sons. And one of the most important of his sons was Abdullah. And he decided later on in his life he was, wanted to marry so he was looking for someone to marry and a woman asked to marry him but she offered him a hundred camels in place of the camels that his father had slaughtered which ended up being what saved his life but he was not interested in her but who he was interested in who he did end up marrying was a woman named Amina. And the Quraysh, they witnessed the wedding. Abdullah was overjoyed at being married to Amina. The two, they returned back to Mecca. And he saw the same woman that had offered to marry him and she asked, was he married? He said, yes. He said, how do you know? She said, there was a light in your face. It is gone now. I therefore know that you have married. And he didn't understand this. But what happened was, when Amina, Amina returned back, she found herself to be pregnant. And for the first of his life, that his first his life was saved, then he got married. Now he was to become a father. Of course, we all know who he is going to be a father too. But what happened was, she's pregnant, and he was returning home from a business trip, and he died. And he was in the prime of his youth, but he did not live to see his first and only child, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And all of Mecca mourned for him. And Amina's Amina's eyes was filled with tears. She did not enjoy much time of happiness with her husband. Even the perfume of her wedding dress had not even gone. Abdul
Abdullah's death ended her joy, and she became a young widow very quickly. But she was given something by him, which was the child that she was carrying in her womb. And we see that this is also the year of the, the elephant when Abraha, he is the commander of the Ethiopian army, he arrived intending to destroy the Kaaba. And an Arab had went and urinated in it instead of making Tawaf around it. And therefore, Abraham vowed to destroy the Kaaba to which all the Arabs came to perform Hajj. And he came with a large army and huge elephants to destroy the Kaaba. But what happens is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented him to the point where even the elephants he was racing towards the Kaaba with the elephants and the elephants would not budge. They would not move. The big elephant came to stop and refused to move. And he ordered it to be beaten, but it still refused to move. And he became more firm, but suddenly without warning, there was birds that filled the sky and each had pebbles in its beak. And when it threw the pebble at one of Abraham's soldiers, he died. So this was the destruction of the entire army. And the corpses lay there and the birds ate from them. And it says in the Quran, do you not see what your rub did with the companions of the elephant? Did he not make their plan fail and send against them flocks of birds? They pelted them with stones of baked clay. He made them like empty stalks of eaten corn. And the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the father Abdullah, Abdul Mutalib, Mutalib, and the Quraysh, they rejoiced, they was happy. The Kaaba's rub, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had protected it against the evil of Abraha and his army. And this is why this was called the Year of the Elephant. And he, Abu, Abdul Mutalib, Mutalib, hastened back to the house where Amina had been close to giving birth. So we'll pick up right here. The clear sky was filled with stars and the people of the earth stared at the sky. They found it decorated like a bride awaiting her groom. The moon was brilliant, lighting up the sky with its light. A pleasant, delicate breeze blew in every place as if it was a breeze of Jannah. Everyone felt happy but could not explain why. In Persia, the people used to worship the fire. They suddenly found it distinguished. In the palace of the emperor Anushirwan, Anushir, Anushir the windows fell. The people in the palace were frightened. Lake Sawa, which they revered, dried up. The emperor saw his throne shaking and split apart. He got scared and went far away. The monks all came out. They were convinced that the new prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ahmed, the prophet of the final era, had arrived. He about whom Musa alayhi salam had informed them in the Torah, followed by Isa alayhi salam. They found his description in the Torah and the Gospels. They knew the signs of his birth. So they called out, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been born today. Ahmed has been born today. In Mecca, Abdul Mutalib told the people that he had dreamt that a light had emerged from his back and enlightened the world. Amina told him that she had seen a light emerge from her belly which filled the palaces of Syria with light. When she gave birth, she felt no pain. The baby emerged smiling and not crying. He raised his index finger to the sky. Then he fell in prostration on the bed of his rub. Amina looked around her. It was as if the skies had fallen from the sky and surrounded her. Everything was filled with light. 
but it was no ordinary light. It was a light which did not harm the eye. It made one glad and relaxed. The eye desired that the light would be continued. Abdul Muttalib was sitting by the Kaaba when he was given the news of the birth of a grandson to replace the lost son Abdullah. He stood and said, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I name him Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the people in the sky and earth may praise him. Abdullah had been his most beloved son. Joy now filled his home after it had been filled with sorrow. A joyous feast was held. A joyous feast was held. Muhammad bin Abdullah was the son of two slaughtered, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the son of two slaughtered ones. His forefather, Ismail, radiallahu an, alayhi salam, excuse me, and his father, Abdullah. The whole world prepared to receive the light of the son of two slaughtered ones. So we take from this opening chapter beneficial lessons. Fulfillment of promises is a good quality. So we as Muslims, we should always try to do our best to fulfill our promises. If we say we want to do something, we should do it. And we know that in, in the Quran in translation, Allah says, why do you say that which you do not do? So he doesn't like for us to say those things which we do not do. Now that could also mean, why do we command the people to do certain things and we're not doing them ourselves? But we should always fulfill our promises, which is a good quality of a Muslim. The Kaaba is Allah's sacred house. So we learn that from this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protected it from the, the evil tyranny of Abraha, the Ethiopian general. And we learn of the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we learn that it is noble and it is of a chaste lineage. So we learn of his father, we learn of his father's father and we see that he comes through the lineage of Ismail alayhi salam we learn of his mother and we see that he comes from the best tribe of the Quraysh. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the son of two slaughtered ones, his forefather Ismail and his father Abdullah. So this book has uh, questions too, which can ask your young children so that way they you can test them to see if they're actually learning as you read to them or you allow them to read on their own it allows you to be able to fill in the blanks and whatnot and then it gives you the answer so we're going to see how much you have learned young yeah. So the name of the tribe which lived in the city of Mecca was the Quraysh. MashaAllah. However, the people worshipped idols and placed them the Kaaba. near the Kaaba, in the Kaaba. So I'm going to give you these right here. These are like true or false. So I ask you this question, you tell me true or false. Or if I say this statement. The year in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born was called the year of the elephant. False. This is true. Yeah. What happened was the year that he was born, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did what with the Kaaba? He protected it from Abraham. Who had come with elephants in an army to destroy it. But the elephants would not budge. So remember this for the future, inshallah. The Arabs were generous and fulfilled their promises. True. True. Ding, 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 ding. 
Abraha destroyed the cow. Amina was Abdul Muttalib's wife. Who? Whose wife was she? MashaAllah. So, this is our stopping point for today. Inshallah ta'ala. And once again, this book, it is small, but it gives us a brief introduction into the birth and life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so that way we may come to love him more and appreciate him more. And we know that there's a hadith in translation which says that we should love him more than we love our own self, our own fathers, our own children. And one of the things that I found most interesting from this section in this book was that even at the time of his birth, he raised his fingers to the sky, symbolizing La ilaha illallah. And then he fell down in prostration even as a child, even as a baby at his birth. This is so uh, amazing and it made me fall in love with him even more so, because I did not know this. So alhamdulillah for the little known facts about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And may Allah continue to guide us to more information that will cause us to fall in love with him, inshallah ta'ala, so that we may be better followers of him and be able to help others to understand his importance from then, now, and until the day of judgment. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he sent him as a mercy for the worlds. Plural. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his blessings upon him. And the angels send their blessings upon him. So may he be eternally blessed all the days of his life. Because we know that he is alive. Where he is now. May Allah continue to strengthen our Amen by continuing to guide us to the information and knowledge that will bring us closer to Him. Amen. May there be peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma la sayfun wa salamu ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh